Okay, next up we have E Y'all. Am I saying that right? Is it E Y'all? It's E Y'all, but you're pretty hey. close. Well, welcome, E Y'all. Thank you so much for joining us today. Sure, A pleasure. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing wonderful too. Doing great. I believe today we're talking about deep Dow and Dow statistics. Is that right? Yep. That's the awesome. topic. Well, I'm definitely excited to learn more. Uh, are you going to be sharing your screen? I will be sharing my screen. Let me try that now. Okay. Can you hear me well? Yes, I can. You sound great. Okay, terrific. So should I start? Uh, yes, yes, the, the floor is yours. Please introduce yourself so people know a little bit more about you. And then, uh, yeah. Okay, Let's terrific. <clears throat> so I'll start with uh, the Deep Dow screen. I'll introduce myself over that. I'm Eyal. I'm the founder of Deep Dow. Nice to be here. Um, I know you guys for a long time, so it's great to actually speak in your event. Couple of words about myself. I've been in um, software and product for some 20 years, both in the US and Israel, worked at Apple for a time and a bunch of other companies. And I was also an activist and I was part of groups that were, um, that had decentralized ambitions for over a long time, uh, even the, before the word existed. You know, we were talking about a flat movement, uh, everybody's voice counts, everybody's vote, uh, voices heard, everybody's vote counts. Uh, the idea was to reach decisions with uh, maybe not consensus because it's really hard, but with, with a shared agreement. And I experienced personally how the group starts with a lot of people and then uh, gradually it falls into the hands of two or three people or four people and it becomes centralized. And then the activists leave because they were expecting something else. They were expecting to have their voices heard. And, and so movements uh, become centralized and, and die, many of them. And this was very disappointed for me personally. I, I hated that. And I stopped being an activist. And then um, uh, I stopped being an activist for a few years. Then in 2017, I came into crypto and uh, in early 2018, I read some of the some of the um, DAO platforms white papers like DAO Stack and Aragon and Colony, and I immediately fell in love. I felt that there is this is the technology that uh, that has a chance to to solve the system wide problem that I was was seeing. You know, I was, uh, as part of the, those groups, I, I reached myself a position of, of power a couple of times. And so I, I knew that everybody's intentions were good and my intentions were good. We all wanted to, to build a decentralized movement and we couldn't. So I, I realized there is a system-wide problem and, and that the DAO technology can, can solve this problem. And so I joined the DAO, uh, the first big DAO that was around, which was Ge Genesis Alpha by, uh, by DAO Stack and started hanging out with people. And, and then uh, after a while, I really wanted to see a DAO explorer to understand who is uh, voting, who is proposing, what are the patterns, who is winning a lot, who is losing a lot, who is voting with whom, because I, I knew that people in groups vote with their friends or with people who have their interests aligned. So there are coalitions. And I really wanted to see that. So I bugged the team to build it and the team, team was busy. So I uh, created a proposal uh, in the DAO and um, got some play money and, and started developing it. And for three weeks, I created the, the Deep DAO POC myself. Then the community was, was excited and I added uh, more DAO stack DAOs and then Moloch DAOs became DAO house DAOs and, and then some Aragons. And here we are two years later with, with uh, as you can see, almost 5,000 organizations on DeepDAO, which is, to me is still amazing. I'm still amazed at every DAO that we're adding. And uh, <clears throat> should I continue? Just continue on? Okay, I assume that the answer is yes, so I will. So I prepared a few stats for, uh, for this call 
it's um, very informal. I don't know if it's possible for you guys to ask questions, but if you can, uh, please stop me and ask any question. questions. Uh, a discussion format is great. So if you can see my screen, this is a, a presentation I actually prepared a few months ago for uh, an event that was called the State of, the, the State of DAOs. And they asked me um, for several things, for example, to explain what is a DAO. So uh, I'm sure everybody here knows what is a DAO, and, but basically it's a group of people working together towards a common goal and manage assets together. And at that time, this is six, six months ago, there were 1 mil million governance token holders. The number of DAOs on Deep DAO was 150. And all of them together were managing $10 billion, which is a huge number. I, I still remember a time where DAOs were managing a couple thousands or maybe 50,000 or less than $1 million. And so these numbers are from September 2021. And let's look at the numbers from now, from today. There's 3.6 million governance token holders over multiple chains. So the number really jumped 3.5x in the past six months. And the number of DAOs is 4,833. 4, We're adding more and more all the time. The AOM has gone down, bear market reached the DAOs as well. And uh, if you actually want to compare the number, if you look on the DAO, you can see that out of these 7.4 billion, 2 billion are investing contracts. And uh, back in September 2021, we did not even count investing. So that number would be 5.5. So bear market has really hit DAOs hard. The, at, at the top, at, in December or January, the the total AUM was actually about uh, 16 million. And uh, if you would have counted the vesting contracts, it would have been over 20, 20 billion. So uh, a huge amount of money managed by DAOs back then. And, and again, the number is smaller right now. But the number of active people uh, and, and governance token holders continues to rise. So there are 673K people or other addresses who voted in a DAO in any of those uh, almost 5,000 DAOs. There are over 60,000 decisions made on Deep DAO, or rather made in, in various for, various platforms and and collected and aggregated on Deep DAO. And 3.6 million votes. These are amazing numbers to me. Uh, I think uh, the promise of DAOs that was just uh, something that we were all hoping will happen in, in uh, 2018, then 2019 is really happening. And these numbers make it very clear that, that it, it does. And just to show you, uh, all these numbers are available on our website, of course. Uh, the total, total treasury size, the voters and proposal makers and active people. There are 94 organizations, DAOs, with over 1 million, and 53 with over 10 million, and 32 with over 100 million. These are amazing numbers. Uh, <clears throat> very, very impressive uh, to my admiring eyes. And over here on, on our dashboard, you can see uh, the treasury size for each of these DAOs, and you can roll over and see uh, liquid investing, and you can see the last 24 hours change. I like to, over the past few days, I like to look at, uh, okay, we're in a bear market. Who's rising in a bear market? And you can see some of the people who are actually uh, doing pretty well, even in this climate over the past 24 hours. Not that few of them actually. Uh, and even some of them, Rarible, for example, Lizardow and, all, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> And so these are the, the large ecosystem numbers. And just to uh, talk a little bit about growth. So this is 2018. Two of the 5,000 DAOs listed on Deep DAO started in 2018. These numbers reflect the first proposal ever made in, in, a, in a DAO. 
So there are two proposals from 2018 on DeepDAO. And 2019, you can see 15X, very impressive. 30 proposals were created, 30, 30 DAOs, that, 30 new DAOs that created a proposal were added to DeepDAO in 2018. And then if we continue on 308 in 2020, again, very nice growth. And then of course the explosion in, uh, 20, in uh, 2021 with over uh, almost 3,500 DAOs added to our dashboard. I don't have the 2022 numbers, but this is continue, continuing to grow. Um, this gap is, uh, I should uh, tip my hat to Snapshot, which came uh, with a brilliant idea of how to uh, actually do governance at the, clim at, the, at the time where gas fees were almost making this uh, impossible. I, I remember there was a time back in, uh, I think around 2019 or 2020, with, when it became, uh, it, it was like $30 to vote in a DAO. And that's really crazy, even for people in crypto in, in a bull market. So um, it, it's now possible to vote in a DAO. And and um, can you guys hear me well? I'm seeing that there's an issue with uh, my connection. Okay, I still see everybody. And I don't know if you can speak, but I'll just continue. <clears throat> so these are, these are some of the growth numbers. And uh, yep. you sound fine. Uh, I sound fine. Great. So uh, this is the growth numbers, and uh, a few a few more um, a few more statistics and uh, things that you can find here. So I love to demo uh, governance governance capabilities over over DX, uh, DXDAO because you can really see it very vividly. So DXDAO to people who don't who are not familiar with it uh, is a large DAO. They're managing $64 million, even now uh, in a terrible bear market. And they're doing a lot of proposals. There's a lot of activity in this DAO. They have 777 proposals and 522 people with, uh, with voting power. And if you go to the uh, on the finance on the finance, uh, which is really a general, you can see a bunch of information, including the treasury composition. So you can see that a lot of uh, the money here is coming from the project's own token, the DXD. Over uh, almost sixty percent of the treasury is coming from DXD, and then ETH, and then um, some stable coins, but really most, most of it is in the own project uh, token. And here you can actually see all the data that we are using, all the sources of the data. Everything is very, very open. Uh, DeepDAO is not open source, but our mission is to show as much data and, and, and um, share much of the, as much of the data as we can. So these are the two uh, governance systems that the DAO is using. And these are all the treasuries. And you can see that um, four of them are liquid and one of them is vesting. And this is the project token. And over here, you can see the top stakeholders ba based on activity. So these are the people that created the most proposals and voted the most. And um, <coughs> similar organizations. So this is traversing the, the social graph and finding people that uh, mutual members and mutual tokens that are held in the treasury. And you can see some of the other big DAOs are, are involved here, ENS and Gnosis and Uniswap and Gitcoin, MakerDAO, really the OGs of the ecosystem. And here's something that's really interesting. And you're able to see, remember when I started this, uh, this journey, I really wanted to see the power dynamics of the DAO. And so this dashboard allows you to see it. And if you sort by uh, share percent, which is voting power, you can see that the top person on this DAO has 7.2% of the voting power. Then it goes down to 5, 4.3, uh, and the number 10 still has 3.2, which is a lot. It's very nice distribution uh, of power. And then 
it goes down and the 20th person still has 1.5. Again, this is uh, very equitable if you're thinking about large companies. And then it goes uh, to less and less and um, like the bottom uh, 100 is rounded to zero. Uh, people still have uh, power. And I really wanted to see what people are doing with this power. So is this person active? And you know, in Moloch Dao, for example, the strongest person uh, for a time, the, the early stage was Vitalik, a Vitalik account, but he never voted and never created any proposal in the Dao. So he basically put some money, uh, gained a lot of voting power, but uh, left the community to, uh, to decide what they want, which is a nice thing to do. And this person, strongest person in the DAO created 20 proposals, won 90% of them and uh, 18 to two and voted on 232 proposals, which is a lot, it's almost a third of the proposals in the DAO and winning almost every time, every vote, 230 wins, two losses. And then I really wanted to see the coalitions that this person is involved in. And to see that, we're looking at this dashboard and you can just do a simple copy paste and you can see these are the top two coalitions, the coalitions of uh, the top two people. And this person is a member of many of the coalitions, which is really not surprising. Uh, people vote with their friends. And here you can really see it. And you can see that this person and this person voted together on 113 proposals, which is almost 15% of the proposals they voted together. And then if you look at this person, this is actually uh, the number two strongest person. And you can see that these two people vote together a lot. And so their combined power is like 12%. That's already a lot of power. And now imagine seeing this uh, in, a, in a broader sense, in an API, and you can really understand a lot of what's going on in this DAO. And I think I'm coming up uh, on the time limit. Should we uh, keep it open for questions or do you guys want to see some more statistics? Um, it'd be cool to see a little bit more statistics. Okay. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> here's our first uh, cut of API. And um, these are the ecosystem stats. So you can use our API and get uh, a view of everything that is uh, happening in the DAO. All the statistics I just showed you on the site are available in API. And right now it's free. It's not going to stay free for long. And you can see a breakdown of the chains. So the largest uh, number of uh, the total treasury size is the biggest on Ethereum, mainnet, the most votes, uh, sorry, token holders. And then the second strongest chain is Solana with um, 600 uh, million, $667 million in its treasury. And the third strongest is the substrate, which we just added a few days ago, like the Polkadot and, uh, and Kusama ecosystem. And they're managing to get our $434 million in eight organizations, chains and parachains. And so this is the ecosystem stats. <coughs> and over here, you can see active proposals. And this is interesting because one of the things people are talking about, uh, everybody that, that looks at governance for the first time and DAOs the first time, they're like, oh, participation is very low. Only uh, maybe 1% of the people are, are uh, participating. And this is really, uh, I laugh when I hear that because compared to what? Compared to the world at large where people don't vote ever or don't participate in governance ever, compared to democracy where uh, modern democracies where people vote once every four years or five years or six years even in, in a system like France, presidential elections, for example. So in governance, people are voting every day. 
And when you look at this, uh, this API endpoint, so active proposals, all the active proposals on detail, so basically everything that you can see here in our DAO feed is an aggregation of proposals from all these 5,000 organizations. And you can scroll down and really get a picture of what's going on in the DAO ecosystem in, in governance, <coughs> both discussions and proposals. And if you look at this, or this proposal, for example, it's active right now and it has 4,400 voters. This is an amazing number, it's a huge number. And then if you go to the second proposal, there is 2,321 voters and 1,700 voters and 1,500 voters, 1,500 voters. There's a lot of voting activity going on. There's uh, real governance, real community participation. And all of this is, is available, transparent, and people can see it and, and understand what's going on. And to me, that's really, um, th that's really revolution. Uh, revolutionizing uh, the way people work and people organize. And this is not a small uh, number of people. This is not small participation. It could be potentially small in percentage, but a lot of people, thousands and thousands of people are spending the time and putting the effort to understand topics and to develop an opinion about them. Uh, this is amazing. And just to look at um, use cases. So, you can find each one of these 5,000 DAOs on the DAO. For example, you can find MetaFam and you can see statistics. That's probably a misspell. So you can find uh, MetaFam in here and, and 5,000 other organizations. And you can also search by categories. So you can see which categories. DeFi is the largest category by number of people and by total treasury, NFT is the second largest category, NFT is a very, very much a rising uh, use case for DAOs. DAO tools is the third biggest category. It's really interesting that uh, many tools in the ecosystem are, are being created by DAOs. And you can see that the ecosystem, the DAO ecosystem is building its own tools. Like these are the people from the inside and they're building what they need in order to manage DAOs. And <clears throat> a couple of uh, working collectives <clears throat> and uh, physical assets, which is really interesting. Of, of course, you know about Constitution DAO, but Moon DAO, uh, I, I hear it's uh, the same people and, and others. There's um, scientists are, are getting uh, together in DAOs in more and more numbers these days. Gaming, of course, is another use case for DAOs, arts and culture, and VCs, obviously, uh, this is one of the strongest use cases. There's uh, whole platforms for, uh, for uh, VC DAOs like uh, Tribute and, and uh, Syndicate. And really, that's where it stands. Awesome. Thank you so much. I, I think that was an amazing interface to check out uh, DAO statistics. I didn't know that something like that existed. And I think it speaks really well for like integrations and being able to uh, integrate DAO proposals and things into a front end. Um, are there any kind of rate limits or things that people should know about when accessing the data? OK, so uh, right now, everything is free and uh, including the API. So you can reach out to us at uh, info.deepdow.io or find us on Discord. And you can, um, you can just get a free access to, uh, to all the API. Right now, there is a rate limit. I think it's 10K. But if you want more, we just give it to you. And uh, there's a lot of people actually already reaching out, uh, researchers, students, uh, financial institutions, what have you. So there's okay. a lot of interest in, in data about DAOs, actually. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely check it out. Um, and your name, let's see, Eyal. Did I say it right? Eyal. Eyal, yes. Eyal, awesome. Thank you so much, Eyal. We'll check. We'll check in with you. Later.